Only 4,250 pounds dry weight. This little 220 Apex crossover travel trailer toy hauler as Dell Ultralight Extreme Off-Road Package with Solar Package. Whew, that's a lot to say is a cool little critter. It kind of slips in between where a few other toy haulers don't quite tread. It has a version of a ramp patio system you don't normally find at this size. You've got the narrow towing, uh, you know, tandem axle, easy nature of a small camper. I mean, this is, there's a lot of cool things here. And then you couple on the fact that it has a private front bedroom instead of an open concept bed like most small toy haulers. You got something that Maybe not for everybody, but it's definitely going to be that like, oh man, I've been looking for something with that set of qualities that just you could never find before. Normally I try to show RVs with the slides closed, but I thought it might actually be cool before we crack that door open to take a look at it with the ramp door closed. And it's actually one of my favorite parts of this floor plan because it just turns into a neat camper. It turns into a neat rear living lounge area and it's it's more than just a garage which considering the small size of this camper is really impressive because the smaller something is the harder it is to make it look neat and functional like this but man <laughs> they did the trick but i think most of the time most of the people that are buying one of these things they intend to probably have that ramp gate down and what's cool it's kind of like uh, its cousin, the Freedom Express Blast, kind of the 17 BLSE that we have here at Halid RV. It has a magnet uh, catch screen wall. So what's cool is unlike the tent screen walls, which are not fun to roll away, I was not a Boy Scout. I'm not good at rolling up a bedroll. It sounds stupid, but it's just uh, I don't have the patience for it. I, I just want it to be done now. I can just yank this thing down. I can stuff it in a cubby. I can toss it on the sofa. I can get it out of the way. And it has a zip-up panel in the middle. So, you know, if you want to be able to pass through but keep the bugs out, you can do that too. And when we get that little magnet bug screen wall out of the way, we see there are some very different forces in play here. Now you got kind of a sneak peek of this thing while we were inside, so the awe factor's kind of already been shot. But that TV, it can pivot around. It can face out the rear wall. It can face toward the sofa, toward the front area here. It is a double swing arm pivot, so it can really swing around. Now, most of the time in a little toy hauler, there's this little rickety table on two kind of ironing board style legs, and it's good enough. It's lightweight, it's inexpensive, it's great for camping. You can move them anywhere. But they did it a little different here. They made a really cool couple's kind of elevated fancy pants ritzy dining station right here you got these dual floating stools and you can kind of see how that table it actually folds down against the wall we'll see that in a second but all of the countertops through this rv are a sealed edge press membrane material so they're all waterproof you'll find that here you'll find that in the, the kitchen the bathroom even that sort of little i don't know call it like a buffet over there past the sofa now the sofa obviously its primary intention is that it's here for entertainment it's in the perfect place directly across from the tv for viewing but note you can get some great campsite uh viewing going on here now that uh little uh bug screen wall that magnet job that we saw that's up there in one of those little cubbies you know it folds up nice and small it really doesn't eat up space i love those things there are pleated shades through this thing to give you some privacy by the way all the windows are tinted and I think you get the idea. Uh, the the other thing that this can do though, is this sofa can still fold down into a neat little guest sleeper. And it works kind of like you call a jackknife sofa in most things, but in small toy haulers, very often what you'll have are these floating cushions. And if you want to fold the bench up out of the way for loading purposes, you have to kind of find a place to store them. But that's not the case with this folding sofa right here. It actually has a mechanical mechanism where the whole thing just slaps up against the wall and creates that loading area that you want and need. And if you could do me a solid for now, overlook all the little nylon buckle straps hooked up to all these D-rings, of which there are plenty. These are uh, the little things where you'd use to like strap down those uh, stools that we saw in transit. And I'm moving fast. I've got a lot of RVs I have to get to on the videos today, so I just hadn't had a chance to unclip those things. But it's kind of funny because this little thing, like it looked super busy and full. And then you get that sofa out of the way, you fold that table down out of the way, and that thing folds easy. It's super sturdy, it's strong, but it gets right out of the way. The TV flattens against the wall, and suddenly it opens right up in here. We've got ourselves an easy cleaning carpetless camper that 
here's the thing. This could be handy for like a dirt bike or four wheelers or the normal stuff, but kayaks, uh, you know, bicycles, those sorts of things. I think the smaller nature, the smaller body of this floor plan will uh, organically kind of make it appeal a little bit to folks who aren't necessarily looking for, you know, like Polaris Razor sort of uh, toy haulers. And there's nothing wrong with those things. Obviously, we have a bunch of them here. I just think that this thing appeals to a little bit different audience. But what's nice is it still actually has a pretty decent kitchen situation going on here considering the small size of the camper. Up top, they've got some deep overhead cabinets, and all of these apexes have pocket screwed cabinetry, so it's not part particle board. Basically, if you're gonna be bouncing this thing off road a little bit, which chances are you are, it's built to withstand that. Part of the off grid package is the larger, kind of like uh, Max Air Vent style fan up here to give you that superior exhaust. Very, very handy when you are off grid, or if you just don't want to run the air conditioner all the time. You have a uh, full two-door, six cubic foot fridge freezer. We already talked about the countertops. One thing to mention, they, uh, Apex is uh, in the Nano Series. They had 30-30-30 holding tanks, which was great. They had 30 gallons in all three styles of tanks. But they recently improved the holding capacity of their fresh water to 50 gallons. So this has more water holding capacity than it would have previously, even though it never existed with these smaller holding tanks. Now over here, what I think we're going to call the buffet station, again, good deep cabinet space. They really did a good job of not wasting anything, and that trend continues up here as we approach the uh, little Bluetooth entertainment system. This you can easily link up to your phone, although it does have an AM, FM receiver. But what's neat is they leave a handy little pocket up here, so if you want to kind of just leave your phone plugged in or something like that and just streaming music off this, you can. There is also the J Control app you can get free and throw on your phone so that if basically you can, you know, use your phone as a remote control to control this thing when you're out and about on your campsite. From there, we move our way through a walkthrough middle bathroom, which provides excellent privacy to an enclosed front bedroom, a hard thing to find in a smaller hauler, which... <laughs> is a lot of fun to say. You see the skylight above and the shower surround paneling, but as we turn, another power vent fan. So this RV will always have one in the kitchen, one in the bathroom, but with the off-grid package, you upgrade the one that's in the, uh, the kitchen and living area. There's also some very good linen storage space above that foot flush stool. And if you get long legs like me, you're never going to have a leg room issue. But we're watching a video. Why talk about it when we can see it, right? You can see that what's nice is they didn't just leave stupid open pockets. They put shelves in there so it's really functional space and a handy place to hang a uh, towel when you're all done. Now there's a sliding privacy door here for the bedroom as we come up. It's an east-west private bed, which is uncommon. But again, the goal here was to really target a specific length and weight and they've nailed those things. Outlets right there on the side of the bed. You've got a handy headboard area. A lot of the Apex uh, Nanos do that. Full overhead cabinet storage that is deceptively deep, although the camera's not looking too friendly while we're staring directly at that beautiful front windshield right now, is it? So let's get in here a little bit closer. I open this up, you see that's actually some pretty serious storage space. Uh, next to that, we have our TV hookups. And if I spin you around like a record, baby, right round, you see that you've got cross breeze windows going on across the bed, but you've also got Good dresser and closet space here. Well, I mean, at least good as far as small camper standards go. Is it as big as, like, say, uh, you know, a Jayco Pinnacle Luxury fifth wheel? <laughs> no, of course not. But a small private bedroom hauler like this with a, a you know, dedicated closet, that's it's not bad. It's pretty good, actually. And there's a huge benefit to the way that they have that bed set up. And that is that you get a huge pass-through as a result. You can see the spare tire is dwarfed inside here. And you have big baggage doors on both sides. Now, a couple things over here. This has the off-grid package that's doing a few things for us. It adds some handy little outlets here in the pass-through. And that is your charge controller for the roof solar system. And we've done a... Uh, you know, videos on talking about the various solar systems different RVs have, but the idea behind this is that you can maintain pretty much indefinite use of your 12 volt systems when off grid, which is pretty darn cool. You got the little toy lock thing up front that's really handy for more than just bicycles or dirt bikes. Frankly, it's cool just to kind of, you know, keep your lawn chairs and stuff from wandering off. 
Part of the off-grid package is also the second propane tank you see there. Normally an Apex Nano uh, would have a single propane tank. Um, now this says Apex Extreme because it has that uh, off-road package on it, which is the bigger tires and stuff. But that goes hand in hand with the, uh, so the, there's off-road and off-grid, not necessarily the same thing. Off-road package and extreme, uh, God bless it, I knew I would screw that up. So there's the extreme package off-road, then there's the solar package off-grid. The off-grid package has the uh, second propane tank included on it, but that also means this now picks up an auto changeover regulator and the hard shell propane cover. Nice stuff. And it's an easily overlooked feature, especially at this budget. That larger foot pad for the tongue jack to help keep this thing from sinking in at your campsite that is, that's that's not to be underestimated. That's a handy dandy feature right there. Both of those big pass-through baggage door compartments have the uh, uh, magnet holdbacks and those sealed protected hinges. And that kind of goes right along with uh, the, the, the service records that we see on Apexes. This is a brand that has been rivaling our Winnebago's in terms of supremacy of service records. They seem simple at times, but that's what makes them so good. They're simple where they should be, and fancy where they could be. And there's no better way to describe an Apex than that. Centralized hookups right here. Like you've got your water stuff here, next to your sewer. You've got your electrical stuff over there. Makes sense. The uh, off-road package here gives us those cool tires. I always, like I get that these tires, they look sweet. They look just awesome. They look all beefy and extreme. But <laughs> I don't think they help the trailer from spinning out in the mud which is sort of the visual aesthetic I think they're going for. But the fact is they do look pretty darn awesome. Now back here, this is rather unconventional. I've never seen something really done like this before, but I get why it is the way it is. So you see that it has, the ramp can fold out into an open patio, but it's an open patio. It doesn't uh, have rails around it. There's a few reasons for that. Uh, the first of which is there is no supplier to the RV industry that makes a patio deck rail system that fits this ramp. The second thing is to just, uh, it's actually the patio rail system that costs a bunch of money. All we're looking at here is just a couple cables and a couple cleats. So it gives you the ability, if you want to, this RV can be used with a rear patio or you can just open it up like we've done here and just kind of get a nice little open air sort of feeling going on. Or you can take the cables off and you can just use it like a normal ramp. You can do whatever you want with it, but it gives you an option. Like if it's not built from the factory um, to be able to accept that kind of drawbridge system, you don't want to be messing with that aftermarket. This needs to kind of be done from the factory level. So they did what they could where they could and they created something again that kind of slips between the cracks. There's nothing else exactly like this out there. Power awning with lighting below, and I like how you've got those double campsite windows uh, overlooking your seating, your kitchen area, so you really get to keep a, uh, a nice watchful eye over what goes on on your campsite. And I've been so busy talking about all the neat new, uh, you know, aspects of this floor plan, like the pass-through storage here, that I have completely failed to talk about one of the really calling card features of Coachman's Ultralight RVs, and that is Asdell. If you are not familiar with Asdell, uh, basically, it's a Luon wood panel substitute. Instead of wood panels used under the fiberglass skin in the walls, it's a composite resin material. It is lighter weight. The material itself cannot rot mold mildew. There's a lot of peace of mind and, and assurance that goes with that. But it also is a little more sound dampening and a little bit better at resisting uh, thermal exchange, often referred to as basically a better insulated sidewall. So. You know, it's a super cool quality and it's one of the reasons that they're able to extend the RV a little bit and give it a seven and a half wide body and a private bedroom and still keep it at about 4,500 pounds versus being narrower, shorter, and still 4,500 pounds. The Asdell has a big impact on the ability to, to decorate this floor plan basically. So if you like what you see, give us a call because with the exception of hidden dealer fees, which we don't do, <laughs> we do it all at Halet RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Look, honey, it's an apex. Extreme. <coughs> 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 but. <laughs>
coachman. <clears throat>